You know, this is my first time making a video in England and I'm here to dispel some stereotypes because I'm usually in Poland or wherever, wherever or Pakistan or somewhere sunny and people, you know, there's this stereotype that England has terrible weather it's the middle of spring, does this look like bad weather to you? as you can see that's probably why I don't really video here too much but um, I'm in a pretty interesting place called uh, Beamish which is like a museum but not a museum like uh, anyone you've been before it's more like a theme park if anything else so it's this quite expansive place and everything's sort of old timey so you've got trams, you've got buses um, there's like towns as we can see here we've got the, the home farm, the pit village, the town the fairground and the station and everything's sort of a bit of a throwback we've got cornflakes, we've got uh, sorry, gold flake cigarettes we've got baking powder, all the old advertisements all the old trams and they're all in working order um, yeah, so we'll have a little explore about hi guys Let's see if we can go upstairs So at the minute we're going to the pit village because in the pit village there is sustenance there's a fish and chips place and they make them the old style so they're in beef dripping and the fryers are powered with uh, coal so not like what you'd get in your chip shop at your local so we'll have a pop down there get something to eat because it's very cold and very wet typical english weather so we can see there's the the pit village with the pit cottages and there's a small school there and it's and the small rail line, I think that's a small gauge there so this is this whole place um, it's basically like you've been plucked out and dropped in another time period it's all based around the northeast of England so if you don't know anything about the northeast because I know most of my subscribers are from Poland and Pakistan but um, basically like if you were born here 100 years ago you did one of two jobs you were either built ships or you worked in a coal mine that was basically it So I don't know if you've ever been to let's say somewhere like a Disney World or a Disneyland or some theme parks and they've always got something that goes around to take different people uh, to the other sites um, and you can walk everything if you want to but it's much better to just hop on the tram or the bus it's kind of like the equivalent of the monorail I suppose in Disney World but it's a nice throwback I think it's a, it's a really cool place so this is just a pit village there's another area that's like early 1900s late 18 1890s area and there's a bank there's a street there's an old sweet shop which is very popular um, there's a new place which is like a town in the 50s which is kind of interesting because it just looks like the type of house my dad grew up in um, but I've not been there yet so that wasn't there last time I was here so this is a little farm slash pit cottages there's another farm a bit further up as we can see this nice horse there you can't smell it but it smells like manure here very appetizing and most of this stuff you can go into so we can have a look around the, the old back lanes and probably get wet and say hello to the horsey hi horse he's chill don't know what else we can see over here But 
a lot of these houses, so these aren't reproductions, most of the stuff here is, is original. Um, and what's happened is in different areas when things were getting knocked down, they literally take a brick by brick or maybe in segments. I'm not exactly sure 100% how they do it, but they'll take them and then rebuild them here. So this looks like a very typical Sunland back lane in a lot of ways. Even my house still has these old coal doors. So if you're not familiar what these are, back in the day when people used to use coal to heat the houses, the coal man would come along and he would just open this door and put the coal in for you there. And a lot of houses still have them. Some people have had them knock through and changed, but my house still has one. So. And there's lots of houses in Sunderland where I'm from that have houses basically like this, pit, pit houses. And greenhouses, and as you can see as well, there's people here that uh, basically just walk around in character all day. It's almost a little bit like Westworld. It's like they're robots, but they're not. So we get the old trains here, some train cars. Some rhubarb growing there. That's like a little workshop here. Very cool. All this place. <laughs> right, should we go hunt for some food first? Before we look around too long. This will probably not be able to be put into one video if I am to go around all of Beamish. I've not decided exactly what I'm going to do yet because this place is pretty big. Um, one good thing to know is that the the ticket that you get last year, so if you buy a ticket, I'm not sure exactly how much it is, £20, something like that. Um, there's concessions if you're a student or a pensioner, but it, it sounds like, I guess, it's not too bad of a price, especially when you consider you can just come back as much as you like, especially if you're like me and you live close. I could come here every weekend if I wanted to. I can smell the coal burning for the fish and chips, but I don't know where the fish and chips are. I'm not sure the Maybe, yeah, I see the smoke. Follow the smoke. Fried fish and chip potato restaurant. Davies. Can I have a dab and chips and a dan line and burdock, please? Pardon? Seven. And a dan line and burdock, please. Seven. Thank you. Thanks very much. Do you want your receipt? No, it's Right. Yep, thank you very much. You got a receipt? Yeah, I've got a receipt. Yeah, I've got a receipt. Oh, pop. So, I've made out of the chip shop. It was exceptionally busy and there was nowhere really to sit in there and video without disturbing everybody. So, I figure we'll come over to the, the wet benches where it's a little less crowded and we'll eat some nice fish and chips. I'll set you down somehow. So we've got some nice fish and chips. I just got a, um, a dab because the fish and chip looks, the normal fish and chips looks, uh, looked massive and I'm not that hungry, but it does, I don't know if you can hear that, it's nice and crispy. Nice white fish in there. Hmm. I put plenty of salt and plenty of vinegar on. Although it's difficult to get the vinegar on the chips underneath. Hmm. That's super good. I see the fish there. Lovely white fish on the inside, nice and crispy. Hmm. See the chips there as well. Hmm. Lovely. 
served in like an old style um, comb that's meant to look like newspaper. I suppose they're probably not allowed to use actual newspaper anymore because of health and safety, but hmm, these are really good. Um, oh, and I got a very traditional drink from this island called Britain. I got, oh gosh, I got some um, dandelion and burdock. Now, if you're not from England, you probably have never heard of dandelion and burdock. Um, I don't know, it might even be a very northern thing more than anything. If I can open it with one hand. Maybe not. Wait there. There we are. So you can see colour-wise, it looks... Um, a little bit like a cola, but it's far from that. The closest thing would be sarsaparilla. If you've ever had sarsaparilla, um, it tastes like dandelion and burdock, basically. <sighs> Hand-picked dandelions, burdock thistle root, star anise flavor, and sparkling spring water blended to make this lightly spiced classic. There we can see. So it's, um, you can get it in alcoholic form as well, because it's brewed sort of like a beer, uh, traditionally. But it's literally dandelion, like the flower, and burdock, like the root you get out of the ground. Hmm. This is quite exceptional. This is really good. And if you've never tried dandelion burdock, I'd recommend it. You probably won't like it unless you're from here. It's quite an acquired taste. Um, I've had some Polish people in the past to try it and they didn't like it. Americans may like it because it's close to sarsaparilla. I put the prices the price on the screen as well here because I did see the sign in there. Can't remember off the top of my head. It wasn't cheap, but it's not that bad anyway for the price of fish these days and you're in a museum, right? So they're gonna mark it up. That's how they get the get some profit out of you. Hmm. But I think the fish and chips would have been a bit much because I'd probably eat some more things on this adventure because there's a bakery, sweet shop, and other bits and bobs in the other towns. Hmm. So I'm gonna eat this and then we'll keep on moving. Maybe we'll check out some other parts around here first. And if you've never had fish and chips cooked in beef dripping, there is a difference. And it doesn't taste beefy or meaty. I can't really describe it. But it definitely has a... I don't know what, just slightly different. More, um... It just feels a little crispy. A little, like, the crisp's a little harder, a little firmer. It's definitely worth it. I know a few sh uh, fish and chip shops um, in the northeast of England. I can't speak about all of the UK. Are uh, implementing sort of traditional techniques back. It's pretty good. It's not good if you're a vegetarian or a pescatarian. Do you think we can go up here? It's good for me. This is where I get up here and it says staff only. No smoking. Okay. That's not trouble for me because I don't smoke. See the train there. And a lot of these lines are active. Um, Shoes aren't the grippiest. Well, that's a big piece of metal. <whistles> yes, yeah, so we need to go to the Colliery Village or Buckley 1820. So, like I say, different places are themed with different times. I've never walked through the forest before. 
I think we might go back and get the tram or the bus again. It's just a bit more interesting than walking through a muddy forest. Especially when the weather's like this, when it hasn't stopped raining all day. I just heard someone say it's like Indiana Jones, it is a bit like that, yeah. Oh, we've got like a blacksmith area. Let's have a look. Hi mate, you alright? Doing a bit of blacksmithing? Yeah, the forge keeps going out, so ah. yeah, not, not ideal, but uh, yeah, awesome. just been just been playing today, so yeah, made, made a few key rings and bits and pieces this morning. Oh nice. Yeah, so that kind of thing. Oh cool, nice. Yeah. But, it's easy to make these but, uh, if the fire keeps going out. So yeah, relative. it's quite difficult to make them cold with cold uh, metal. Absolutely, yeah. So it's relatively quick as well. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh, good. Yeah. Interesting yeah. stuff. I love blacksmithing. I think it's so interesting. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing thing. I just do it as a hobby mm -hmm. um, and just volunteer here. But yeah, I l love it. Love it. That you can take a lump of metal and shape it into something else. And do you ever make? Um, hey, what's your favourite thing to make? Um, I, I quite like making tools. I like the preciseness mm -hmm. of making tools. So something that I need to oh, awesome. fix is, is, is these. So I need to get the nut really hot, take the nut off, mm -hmm. and then sharpen up the edge. Oh, nice. Um, so what would they be used for then? So those are tin shears in a big power hammer. Ah, OK. Kind of uh, like steam hammer kind of, kind of, kind of thing. Um, yeah, so, so I like making those. I, li I like making things that are just a little bit more interesting mm -hmm. as well. So kind of, I like things that are made of metal, but, but nature. So, um, oh, like Rose, this. nice. Can I hold that? Just see how yeah, heavy absolutely. it is. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's nice. Lot, very intricate uh, detail in there. Oh, I even see you put the petals on as well. I imagine like it, I think blacksmithing is one of those things where sometimes it looks easy because you just, but, yeah, it, yeah. but it's probably very difficult to sort of ship that without, I guess, like sometimes the metal splitting on you or things like that. That's actually not too bad. So this, the way that this is done is lots and lots of layers. Mm -hmm. So individual layers, they're cut, uh, you cut them through just using a, a hot chisel uh, to, to cut them. Uh, and then you just, you just, you just shape them, uh, just bend them round and then you put that stem goes through, it's effectively a long bolt okay. uh, that, that you put through that holds it in place and then you bend that bottom layer in over the nut, hold it in place. Oh, to keep it secure, yeah. not falling off. And then the tricky bit is to do a kind of fire weld uh, ah, on the bottom. Right. So those that, because you've not got a lot of room to play with, making sure that's really hot without getting everything else too hot is... Uh, right, yeah. yeah. Is, is, uh, Otherwise it'll just deform, right, if everything gets so exactly. hot. Exactly. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. No, yeah, no power time. hammer here though for you, right? It's all just elbow grease. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're fortunate at this time period, there was electricity from, from, the, from the steam boiler. Right. Um, so I don't have to use a bellows to, to get the air to, to, uh, to flow. So, so you have an air pump? Yeah. Oh, right, that's much so, easier. Yeah, so, so that, that is, that's one of, the, one of the good things. But otherwise, yeah, it's, it's as it was 120 odd years ago. So, so is it, what's the time period for this one then? Uh, 1900 to 1940. Okay. Uh, 14. So. 14. Yeah. So just sort of pre-World War One. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, I guess you volunteer, but you get a nice workshop, right? So That's great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bit it's a bit damp. Um, and so the, the coke keeps going out. Mm. Um, uh, but I think I've, I've, I think I've sorted it out. So when I'm, when I'm next in, it should be, it should be all right. So. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it's good fun. What's your name, sorry? I'm Ruben. Ruben, Dominic, nice to meet you. Ah, nice to meet you. I'd shake your hand, but... Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I could just one said it. So there's so much more. It's, um, how long's the walk to get to the other town through the the trees? Or is it quicker to get the bus? Um, I was going to get the bus because it would be more interesting, probably, but... The bus is more interesting, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, to be honest, it's about the same. About the same, okay. Yeah. Uh, in, t in terms of walking. What I tend to do, if I'm going up that way, is I'll get the bus one of the ways. So usually I'll walk up, up there and then get the bus back. Oh, okay, yeah. right, that makes sense. Yeah. I'll do that then. Um, and make sure you see the f 50s villages. Yes, well. that's a new place. So yeah. I've been here 
twice before once when I was like a kid yeah. once a couple of years ago before I think they'd started it but it hadn't been finished oh yeah and yeah. now is it finished or is yeah. it still under well they're, they're still they're still doing it but there's loads of houses and, right. uh, and, and stuff and village hall and, mm-hmm. and things and yeah it's, it's just like your nan's house so, yeah, I was yeah. Honest, it, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking yeah. I was like this is just like my grandma's house yeah, yeah completely because uh, I'm from Sunderland so oh, yeah, yeah. I think some of the houses are from yeah, Sunderland well, right they're from yeah, Red House yeah absolutely yeah. Um, so yeah yeah <laughs> The, um, when they open the cinema, the cinema's from Rye Hope. Um, so it's going to oh, be right, the original yeah. one from, from, from Rye from Hope. Um, but it's just, it, that is exactly mm-hmm. kind of how, how it, how you remember it. Like, there's like, there's going to be like, you'll have little tickets, there'll be intermissions, there'll be all sorts. So, That'd yeah, be great. Yeah, 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 we're good. Awesome. So, yeah. Brilliant. Perfect, man. It was nice to meet you, dude. Take it's, it easy. Yeah, you too. Hopefully you get the fire going. Especially yeah. on a day like today, you'll enjoy the bombs. Absolutely. But I imagine yeah. in the summer, it's not so fun being out, like, at the fire. Yeah. Uh, so you're working at between 800 and 1,200 degrees. Yeah. So, like, it is very intense heat right by the, right by the fire. Um, but actually, by the fire, like, it is freezing. Right. Most, most of the time, yeah. Which is actually not too bad in the summer. Yeah, 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 as well. So, yeah. Awesome. But yeah, hey, man. all good. Yeah. yeah. Take care, man. It was yeah. nice talking to you. Nice, nice meeting you. See, guys, this is the, this is the glorious part of um, Beamish. It's just the people that work here. Like he said, he's a volunteer, so he doesn't do this like for the money. He does it just because he ac- he actually genuinely loves it. And um, I'm sure if I wanted to, I could talk to him all day about his craft. But I can't spend all day just in one area. But for sure, like all these people here, they just love it. So if you meet the guys that drive the buses, they love driving the buses. Like no one's here because they have to be. Everyone's here because they really want to be. Um, it's almost like a passion project, really. So you've got guys like all these buses and trams and the trains, they're all maintained in house. So I'm not sure how many of them will be full-time employed and how many are volunteers, but like you see, this guy's just living his life. He's just as if he was a blacksmith back in the day. He'll be blacksmithing all day making different things. I'm sure when there's bigger crowds, he'll de- do demonstrations for everybody. Um, yeah, it's great. It's such a wonderful place. I can't recommend it enough to come down here because there's so much going on. And one thing to note as well, that during Christmas, they decorate it all like Christmas time. Halloween's meant to be massive. You see a lot of people that um, are into steampunk come here. A lot of, um, I've seen a lot of ladies and guys um, that dress sort of vintage, that are into the vintage fashion. So you'll see girls in, um, You'll see girls in sort of like 1940s swing dresses with the victory rolls in the hair and you'll see guys with the flat caps and they're all and all jackets and stuff and it's uh it's a really good vibe. So here I believe it's also is this also the allotments? I can't quite remember. But here with the pit cottages, I'm not sure if we can go into all of them, but they legitimately grow vegetables here, so we can have a look and see what vegetables they're growing. And maybe go into one of the houses and try not to trips in too much mud right, nothing growing in this one let's have a look oh so we got some rhubarb there some cabbages coming along what's in the greenhouse there's nothing that's fennel. Fennel in the back there. If you're not familiar with fennel, it tastes like aniseed. I'm not a fan, but it's gonna be good for you. This looks like some mint. Let's check. That's mint alright, smells good. More rhubarb. Possibly more cabbages, or oh, that looks different. That looks different. Oh it's broccoli. But does I say broccoli? Ready for afternoon tea there. Cozy. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's surprising a, a lot of people who, you know, are getting really when you've been more like that. For a while, it, it is, it is. It is. What man did you say? Yeah, I mean, 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 I
I was a carer for six years. Yeah. 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 Um, I wish I'd had more support. Yeah. 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 Because I feel like I, I could have done more, but I didn't know. Well, you did as much as you could. So, yeah, that was cosy. I could stay in there all day. That was a nice cold fire roaring away. We can't stay here all day. So let's keep on moving and try and catch the bus. Um, I don't know what the timetable is. I think they're just probably going a continuous uh, route all the way around. But let's try and hop on one. I think one of them comes down all the way, down all the way on the, from the top of the bank. But uh, actually, I think I'll have a walk up because there's a farmhouse up there. So I think we'll pop up there and have a look because I believe a few months ago it was damaged with one of the storms. So we'll have a little, we'll have a little gallivant up there. 